Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Android SDK add-ons. So, how many of you are uh, app developers? I hope many. And how many of you are a system developer who really work on the Android source code? Oh, few. Fine. So, uh, let's begin. So, uh, myself Satish Patel and I work for the Linaro. Uh, currently, I'm working for the uh, Google Sara project. It's a modular phone. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, have you heard of that? How many of you have heard of the modular phone? Yeah, fine. So, uh, I'm working for the Android customization for the uh, modular phone and as a part of that, I got a chance to dig into this topic uh, in bit details. Okay. So, uh, we'll talk about uh, what is SDK add-on, why we use the SDK add-ons, why OEM vendors use the SDK add-ons, uh, what is the pros and cons, uh, how the application developer can use the SDK add-ons uh, that is released by the OEM vendors and how the platform developer should create the SDK add-ons and make it available to the application developers. And I have one example, uh, if time permits, I'll show you. Okay, so before uh, going to why part, I mean, what is SDK add-on and why we should use SDK add-on? How do you use, I mean, have you written the uh, apps which is OEM specific or which use the OEM features? Anybody? Yeah, so how do you use that? You take the entire SDK from the yeah, OEM vendors or you just take uh, some libraries from the OEM vendors? How do you do that? What is the general traditional scenario that you have followed till now? That means you are giving the full SDK. Okay, fine. So, generally, I think if you would have, some, some of you have written the application for the Google Glass or HTC Sense UI or some of the device from the Sony and the Samsung. So, they they have the different uh, terminal or they have the different distribution mechanism by which they make these features available to the application developers. So, how they connect? So, we have the various distribution mechanism. One is you just modify the Android source code, build the full SDK and give it to the Android developer. Uh, that is a non-traditional, I mean, it's like uh, when you open you, when you open the Android Studio, you need to install the you need to download the full SDK from the OEM vendors, install it in the Android Studio, and uh, then start working on the Android apps. The another way is you just distribute the OEM specific changes. That's the lips, whatever you are saying, and the distribution format should be such like that. Okay, fine. You go to Android Studio, uh, open the SDK manager, and just just say, okay, fine. I want the changes from this OEM vendor and it should automatically install all the lips and the documentation for you. So, you should not manually copy all the stuff uh, from the OEM. It just mentioned from one URL and everything should be working out of box. And that is called as SDK add-ons. So, the first approach, what is uneasy about that? So, mainly is SDK size. It, it's normally is more than 300 MB. Uh, when it goes to the SDK add-ons and if you are not including the emulator and the system image, it might be few KB. So, I forgot to put asterisk over there. So, it depends on the how much you want to expose to the application developer. So, sometimes it, I mean, at least uh, whatever we have done, it's, it's only 80 KB for the application developer. So, it's easy for them. You just paste the URL and it's, it's ready to go. Uh, the challenging stuff for the, when you use the uh, the full SDK from the OEM vendor is how do you hide the uh, the magic? How do you hide the code that uh, the OEM vendor writes for the application developers? So, SDK add-ons has that facility that you can hide the implementation details over there. And that's why we use the SDK add-ons. So, it's, the size is less, it's easy of distributions. We can maintain the version, we can host them on any HTTP server or we can even ask Google to add the XML stuff for us so it can work out of box with the SDK manager. Uh, 
and yeah, it has a very nice support in the SDK manager and the Android Studio. So that's how uh, all this has been connected with the Android SDK and the add-ons. I think this has been followed after, I mean, since Ice Cream Sandwich. So uh, it's consistent uh, after that. Okay, let's uh, took a little deep dive in the what is SDK add-on. So it consists of um, two things. One is distribution and one is actual package. So distribution is nothing but it's just an XML file which describes what is there in the package or which API version that you should use it uh, for the application development and what are the libraries and the documentations and the water licensing terms and all this stuff. And the package is actual uh, libraries, uh, Java Docs, system image, uh, if it's there, uh, otherwise uh, it's optional. Uh, stubs, I'll go into a little more depth uh, in later of, uh, yeah, okay, fine, it's right. So what is stub? So stub is nothing but, okay, fine, it's, it's just a wrapper APIs for the application developer. So when they install the SDK add-ons and they really want to dig into jar file, they will not see anything. They'll just say, okay, fine. There is a function foo underscore variable one and it's just say return null or it will return some, some garbage value. And this is what available to the application developer. So there is no magic over there. So they just download the SDK add-on, they write the application for that and when they, they run that application on the actual target and actual OEM uh, specific device, then the actual uh, call links to the, the library which are inside on the uh, target. So it's, it's a dynamic linking and uh, the OEM uh, lo uh, logic will be over here. In fact, uh, the SDK add-ons has the, the specific feature that you can say, okay, I have a 10 APIs. I, I just wanted to open the five APIs to the application developer and other APIs I don't want to expose to application developer. They, they should not know even this API exists or not. So it's a build time option, so uh, I'll show you that, how to configure that. Okay, so the sky view is uh, the OEM or the platform or the system developer, whatever. They write the code, uh, they produce the, the library which they wanted to uh, expose to the application developer saying that, okay, fine, you use this library and you can get, have access to the OEM specific features. Uh, then we need a distribution cycle where we generate the nice distribution package and we host in the some, some of the HTTP server and give link to the application developer to use the same. And the finally application developer. So I'll go through right to left uh, as we have many application developer over here and I thought of that so my slides are in that sequence itself. <laughs> Fine. So how to use that one? So let me show you the real quick stuff. So you just open your Android Studio, uh, open the SDK manager. By the way, I'm not a app guy so I have written very simple. Oh. Not my fault. Yeah, sure. So you just uh, we have to just open the SDK manager, and uh, if the URL is already added by the Google uh, main XML file, you can it will be visible over here. Or else uh, you can actually add, go to manage add-on sites and then say user defined sites and just say new and specify the, the XML that is provided by the uh, OEM. So it can be, let's say for HTC, it's htcdeveloper.com and they will say, okay, fine. You put this URL and then everything will be up for you. Uh, so once we put this URL, uh, then probably we can see Let's say for here, I would say it's, it's visible for the other development kit. So it's already installed. I, I can do an install and I can show you, okay, fine, how it gets installed. But once you click on the URL, this will be visible and then you just say, okay, fine, accept some license and it will install for you. It will fetch from the net and it will install from, uh, and it's ready to use. So when you go to the actual, uh, uh, 
So, it gets copied in the SDK folder. So, when you go to the Android SDK, you will see the special section called add ons, and that is where it gets copied. So, if you see the contents, it has the docs, it has the library, it has the manifest files, everything. Uh, docs are nothing but okay, fine, how to use the SDK add ons. So, that has to be created by the platform developers. Okay. So, so this is just a uh, snapshots that I put in the presentations for the reference. So, this is this is the license term that we need to ac accept uh, and license can be OEM specific. Okay. How to use this uh, OEM uh, specific features? So, you must have used the use feature uh, tag in the Android. So, uh, OEM can say, okay, fine, uh, they have to include these things and this is used when you, you know, download your app and it just check, okay, fine, this hardware is present in your phone or not. If it's not present, it will say, okay, fine, this app is not compatible with this device and that's where we use uh, this functionality. So, we have implemented the I2C and the GPIO APIs uh, which expose all the hardware I2C and GPIO to the end users. Uh, so, that's why we have introduced a new feature called, okay, fine, if it has a I2C API support, uh, it's ready to go. Uh, and then uh, we need to also include the something called uses library. I have not mentioned over here, but it's there in the actual code. Uh, uses library, and then you need to mention okay uh, which library that you want to use as a part. What games as a part of SDK add-ons, and what is there in the documentations by the OEM vendor. Mm, for example, in this such case, uh, what is Android? Okay, fine. So yeah, so I'm using the two libraries. One is uh, GPIO and the and the I2C. Then it will expose all all the functionality for me. So I can say, okay, fine. It's I2C manager. I can get the instance, and then I can use. I can open the device. I can set the slave address, whatever. Fine. So it's good to go for the application developer. Refer the API documentations, implement the app, and get ready to run on the actual device. Any questions for the application developers? So mm, the next section is for the mainly rather for the system developers. So you might get bored, but yeah, any questions till now for the application developers? How to use the SDK add-ons and fine. I think you might have more questions when you use actual when you build the actual uh, application for the ARA, uh, ARA phone, uh, it's all modular. So, you might have to you develop the application for the different kinds of modules. That tons of modules are coming on. Uh, system developer. So, how do you create the SDK add-ons? So, when you are building uh, any specific device, uh, the, the first condition is you have to compatible with the Android CDD. It's a compliant document by the and uh, Google. So, you say if you want to call this device as an Android device, these are the definition and you have to comply with that. So, the first rule is you cannot touch any existing platform specific APIs. So, whatever feature that you want to implement, implement separately, but you cannot by definition you cannot change any of the existing API signatures. Uh, you can introduce new system service, you can introduce new background service, uh, native codes, whatever, but you cannot touch the platform stuff. So, always uh, uh, it is recommended to create a new service under device, whatever OEM name and just, just implement the libraries over there. Okay. So, once we have the source code which can access to OEM specific feature, let us say GPU or let us say high square or the GPI or let us say some custom hardware. Uh, you write a library which can talk to your stuff and then you have the APIs which is available for the application developer and you need to, you need a special make file text in order to build uh, as SDK add-ons and then there is, there is a packaging mechanism for that. So, let us go uh, one by one. So, make file, I think it is it's, uh, it's common across the uh, Android source code. It's just a simple make file that where you mention that this is a Java library and um, I'm building as a Java library. Uh, this is the permission. So, this is where you define, okay, fine. Uh, this API use the, the feature called I2C. 
So if uh, Android manifest.xml, if application developers say, okay, I'm using the SQLC, and if this XML file is not present in your target device, then by definition, it will not allow to install your app on that device. And this is the magic it happens on the, the Android source code layer. You can hack it around if you want. Uh, then documentations, make sure that your code has the proper Java documentations. If it has, then just put this uh, line of stuff in your android.mk file, it will generate the Java doc for you. So no need to do have a separate documentation for the SDK add-ons. So this is all about the, the, the android.mk file that you need to define uh, when you generate the library uh, for the application developer. Now the second part is how do you package and how, how do you distribute as a part of uh, your target system image which are which you are going to flash on your device and the host library which are which you are going to distribute as a part of your SDK add-on distribution stuff. So there are a couple of, uh, uh, so these are the Android specific source code. So uh, if, if you have any time cloned the full Android source code, you might know this directories. So there are something called device directory and in device there is a OEM directory and then you do all the OEM specific stuff, what you want in the, in the Android build, what OEM features that you want in the OEM build, that you put it over here. So first one is SDK addon.mk file where you define the packaging information, so what you want as a part of SDK addons. Second one is tub, it's, it's, it defines what you want to expose to the application developer. The manifest is nothing but the version of the SDK addon and the source property is mainly for the license and the API level that it has to comply when you, uh, it, it depends, so it says okay my target has the minimum API level 23. So if when you distribute the, the SDK add-on you say okay fine you should be having the minimum level, API level 23. You can work with the above but you should be having the minimum level uh, API 23 and then code is ready to go on the device. Oh, it's a long make file, but yeah, yeah, we need to, so these are the non-traditional, you cannot find this in a traditional uh, device.mk file. So this is specially for the SDK add-ons. So you need to use product underscore SDK underscore add-on underscore copy files for copying the files. Uh, then the copy modules, uh, where the module gets built, uh, the stuff definition that, okay, fine, I want the stuff definition as well. So you define everything what you want in your SDK add-on package. And finally you define the product name and the brand. So when then somebody installs the SDK add-on, this will be visible, okay fine, this SDK is from this particular product ID and the vendor ID. Stubs, so as I told you, so stub is, here I just mentioned, okay fine, plus one something dot taste dot type to C. it should be visible to the application developer. And if I just define by minus, and I just define the, the package name. So all the internal star will not be visible to the uh, application developer. I mean, there is no API. Even though they dig into the jar file, they won't find it. it so build will just, it's a nice feature by the Android build. So it, they will just extract out all the minus stuff and prepare the mini library for the application developer. Uh, the manifest file, it just defines the vendor ID, Google, uh, uh, sorry, vendor ID, product ID, API level, and the, what are the libraries are there. So uh, these are the stuff that we we are putting over here. So if you observe, okay, fine, we are copying the source dot properties manifest, all these files. Uh, we tell build system, okay, fine, I want to copy this file as a part of my SDK add-ons and. It makes sense when somebody installs the SDK add-ons in the Android Studio, this file get passed and then you will see the beautiful dialog saying that okay, fine, this SDK is from this vendor, this is the license. So license is defined in the source dot properties. So there is something called pkg dot license ref, uh, sorry pkg dot license. You put the entire license header over here and it will be visible when you install the uh, uh, SDK add-ons. Okay, uh, finally you just put uh, uh, your MK file uh, 
should be part of as a regular build. So it's there is a something called Android product dot mk. Just uh, reference over there. So it will go as a part of regular build. And this is a final build command to generate the SDK add-ons. So when we run this command, it will generate everything with regard to the SDK add-on in the out host uh, SDK add-on directory. So it will have uh, the emulator image. It will have the zip folder which has the Java document and the uh, libraries plus XML file. The next part is packaging. How do you, uh, sorry, packaging and the distribution. So how do we package? So this is the XML file that we need to write it. So there is a tool to generate this XML file but we need to manually edit. We need to manually edit the size of the uh, package that we are going to distribute and the URL of the zip file. Uh, where it contains the libraries and uh, the Java docs. So initially I told you, right, there is a doc distribution stuff and there is a actual package stuff. So distribution is nothing but the add on.xml and uh, these are the package information. So you can say, okay, fine, my SDK contains this many libraries and all sort of stuff. Uh, so to Fill the few of steps in the uh, add on.xmls. These are the few tricks. This is how you can generate the checksum and the actual size, and you fill the data over here size and the checksums and the whatever. <coughs> and then finally, you can validate your XML schema using the one of the schemas present in the actual pre built folder. So you can just run this command XML in, it will show you okay, fine, your XML is fit to go for and fit fit to host in the HTTP server and you can give this XML to any of your uh, application developer community to use your features. Oh, so fast, fine. So I can walk you through the, uh, I think we have a time, right? Ah, cool. Ah, fine, so let me show you. Uh, Okay, let me uninstall this stuff first uh, so we can go step by step. So I'm just deleting this package uh, and I'm also deleting this link. Fine, so now nothing is visible and if I build my code, obviously it will it will show the tons of error that you don't have the right, right libraries for you. Fine. So now the next step is let's install the SDK add-ons. Uh, I just wanted to show you the how it looks like when you install. Fine. So you can give the local path or, or, oh, fine. So this is how the XML looks like. So it has the headers and license headers and it has all the sort of stuff. But we no need to worry about those things. We have to just paste the link over here. Close and yeah, we got something over here. just let's say install package. So it will pop up saying that all, all the vendor and the product information so on top of that. This is the Android SDK license and this is what the RR development kit whatsoever. And you have to accept the license. Install it. Yeah, that's that's done. Ha. Huh. So it will unzip the full package what whatever we have hosted on the HTTP server and it will manually pass the manifest and it will find out okay the, what are the libraries and what are the documentation and then it's ready to use. So documentations uh, as I mentioned that you can go to the SDK on libraries there is a docs uh, and for every library there is a doc so it, it will pretty much looks like this. If it's a Java doc it depends uh, what are the comments that we are putting in the code but it, it it's a Java docs it looks like this. You can even access this from the Android Studio. Ah, okay, fine. Let's and when you 
build against uh, these things you need to do the open model settings and then somewhere here so you just need to mention okay fine i need to compile against whatever install new install sdk package and then your app is ready to go so uh, i have the the uh, the little board over here it's called as 96 boards uh, it's a 64 bit uh, quad core and then I'm using this board as a just a prototyping the new features called SPC and the GPIO in the Android software stack. So I have the target library on this uh, board and I'm, oh it's no USB device found. Let me check. Ah. it's booting now so it should be available hmm. oh My bad, I'm not connected to the cable. Yeah. Okay. So how many of you really knows I2C and GPIO hard stuff? So it might be a uh, little annoying for you, but it just a, it's just a hardware. I mean, most of the sensors I would say it's more than 50% of sensors, uh, typical sensors, temperature and the ambient lights and uh, proximities, they, they are based on the I2C protocol. So all the hardware, it's on the I2C and the GPIO protocols. So, uh, apparently the visor is not running, uh, there is some issues, so, uh, I'm not sure, um, I don't know why it's not running. So what I did is I just hacked the code uh, uh, this morning and I'm just doing everything over here. I'm just opening the SQL device. I'm setting the slave address and then I'm just reading the value over here. Mm. So uh, slave address is nothing but the 30 and I'm reading the value of 3A registers. This is nothing but the uh, identification registers on the one of the power IC which are based on the SQL C on this device. So before I do anything, so this is the command shell for this device and I'll just run the few command line operation just to show you, okay fine, this is the slave address and this is the registers that we are going to read. It's, it's a, so 32 is nothing but the slave address and the 30 is nothing but the register that we are reading, it, it should be FC. So let's do from the application now. So I have the, oh it's already read, so let me rerun. I'll just create the lock at minus C. Let me rerun the stuff. Sorry guys, I have, uh, even though I'm not a good dev developer guy, I have written a small app which has a nice feature, not nice feature, but at least you can taste you can set the slave address, you can pass some register value, it will read it for you and all this thing. But the visor is not running, so I just hacked it uh, for a moment and what happened? It's not running. So I'm not quite familiar with the Android Studio. It just uh, I have to test my SDK add-ons, then I started running on this thing. I don't know what happened. Any idea what is going on? Uh, okay, it's I think it's failing to connect to the device. It's there. C 
this device is offline. I'm not sure it's, it's installed or not. Yeah. So let's check the logs. Look at minuses. Fine. So 252 is nothing but the FC, 0x FC. So it returned the correct value. So we can eventually set any I2C registers and we can get the values. So that's it about the, uh, the SDK add-ons, but it is in a way it's a nice feature that we have to just put whatever OEM specific logic in the separate library and get it distributed to the application developer to make the use of it. Any questions? Should not be for the application developer, but if somebody is there from the system developers, they might have. So this will become a now a traditional way for the OEM vendors to distribute their uh, SDK. So they might not distribute the full SDK, they might just queue the SDK add-ons and it, you can go through it. Unless they have the features which are not platform dependent. Fine. Thank you very much. Thank oh. you. You got a question. Can we do something similar like this with third party libraries? Third party library and uh, just distribute as a, the way we are distributing as a SDK. You just create the package out of that. Okay, so how will distribute that third party library? Okay, so you have a third party libraries and you define, uh, let's say I want to expose 10 APIs out of third party libraries. You just write a wrapper for 10 APIs, which will eventually call the third party libraries. And for these 10 APIs, you generate a separate lib, which will be again hooked separately on the host and the target. On the host side, it will be just a wrapper. On the target side, it will be actual call to your third party library. So I would say you no need to even distribute your third party libraries to the application developer. You just distribute the wrapper of the third party libraries. Let your third party libraries be on your device. For the application developer, it should be just a wrapper. Uh, like I have never used add-ons and all uh, because uh, like my concern is that uh, <coughs> like it will be then very specific for just some. Have you used the Android support libraries? Yeah. It's one of the SDK add-on features. Uh, add, uh, so, but, uh, but it works for every, uh, like every phone out there. Yes. So the Google has, uh, Google is giving all the support libraries as a part of SDK add-ons. So you might not observing because you are not doing this manual steps. So when you, when you launch the SDK manager, it will give you the list of the you know API version and the support libraries. You just click on that and you just install it. Okay. So if you want a similar way for the OEM, you just ask Google, okay, fine. I am the authorized uh, the Android distributor. Uh, and this is by the add-on link. You just add it to your main add-on script then when you launch the SDK manager, it will be appear over there and just click it. It will ready to go. So you might not have followed this step, but it comes when you just launch the SDK manager. Uh, yeah, so whatever comes over here, right? So yeah, yeah so it's something called extra. So Android support repository is nothing but the SDK add-ons. Any like any apps uh, on the market uh, like on uh, which use these features are, like other than libraries? There are many apps. There is apps from the Samsung Mobile. There is apps from the STG Sense UI. So initially, STG Sense has distributed the SDK add-ons, and then now it, it the Google has taken as a regular AOSP source code uh, in the AOSP main tree. So now it says distributed as a Android SDK. Uh, <laughs> Any of you have used the USB accessories? USB accessories, yeah. 
So they have initially distributed as a part of SDK add-ons, so in a honeycomb and the SCAM sandwich and then eventually it becomes the part of Android SDK. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, noticed previously that for license header and the API level, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have to mention it in a separate file called source.properties yes. as opposed to when you are having a framework package or a system package that you have, you mention it in android.mk or a device.mk file. Any special reason for the creating this file source.properties? So we never define the license, so the, all the definition that we put in the android.mk file and some other place, it's just for the, the source sake. But when you really distribute, when you package and distribute something, you need to put the external header saying that, okay, fine, this package has this license. And that's where you need to put all the stuff in the separate source dot properties. And this is how the SDK manager will take it. So SDK manager will take the add-on dot XML file, uh, try to unzip over there and then find, okay, fine, this is a header. I need to show it to the user. If they accept, then it, it will go ahead and install. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a time frame for when the project ARA will be launched? <laughs> so, I'm not authorized to do that, uh, I can't say, sorry. Just a rough time figure. But it should be before the end of this year, should be. Yeah, I mean uh, 2016 or 2015? Uh, no, not 2015, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, probably next year. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, I said, uh, I don't know. So I'm not authorized person for that, okay? <laughs> but yeah, so many stuff are coming uh, uh, and you might have access soon to write the, uh, to develop your own modules or your own hardware and write the, your own custom apps which can access to your hardware. It's a pretty cool uh, stuff which are coming. After the talk, not on this flat. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, that's it for today. We hopefully will see you tomorrow. Before that, please do drop your uh, feedback forms outside. There's a box near the registration desk. And you can still buy tickets for tonight's uh, dinner, which is at Hakuna Matata.